Older gamers may remember the Dance Dance Revolution craze from the early to mid 2000s. Now, the game was a big hit in the arcades, and home console ports also remained popular with critics and gamers alike. Now, while a majority of the titles made appearances on Sony platforms, there were a few games in the series that graced Nintendo hardware, including the Nintendo 64. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications because today, we're taking a look at Dance Dance Revolution Disney Dancing Museum on the Nintendo 64 in this retro review. DDR Disney Dancing Museum was published by Konami and released on the Nintendo 64 on November 30th, 2000. Now, unfortunately for gamers in the West, the game remained a Japanese exclusive. Now, while a PlayStation version of the game titled Dance Dance Revolution Disney Mix eventually made its way to the West in September 2001, the game differed from its N64 brother in terms of the songs that were available on it. Now, to be honest here, there really aren't a whole lot of modes on offer here. I mean, you could choose from the beginning, from like everything from the start. There's a thing called Game Start, Training, Password, and Puzzle Gallery, and then Options. Now, under Game Start, where you'll probably be spending most of your time, you can choose from Single Player, Two Player, or Session. Now, the Single Player and Two Player modes put you through three different songs of your choosing. Session, on the other hand, provides a bit more of a challenge. So. Not only are you tasked with hitting the regular dance steps, you also have to hit a non-directional button, like A or B or something like that, to hit your marks. Now this mode is also where you will be able to unlock in-game collectible puzzle pieces. Now while playing on either the normal or hard difficulty settings, puzzle pieces and special objects will occasionally be mixed in with the dance arrows. Now as long as you get either a perfect or great, you'll unlock that piece or object. These can later be viewed in the password and puzzle gallery. Now there are several puzzles to unlock and complete that you'll need to basically unlock more songs in the game. Now there are 10 songs available from the start and 12 that you can unlock. Now obviously the ideal way to play a dancing museum is with the dance pad. However, if you don't have one, you can still play the game with the standard N64 controller by using a combination of the D-pad and the C buttons. I mean, either way works fine here, and if you're like me and don't really like to break a sweat in your house, the controller option might be the way to play. Purists, or just those lucky enough to find a copy with the dance pad, uh, they'll probably prefer the pad here though. Visuals in Dancing Museum are a pretty simplistic affair, so 2D versions of Disney characters are assigned to different songs included in the package. So placed in some pretty basic 3D environments, these 2D characters animate slightly to the beat of the music. Now it's definitely not making use of the Nintendo 64's power in any way like you might have seen in some other games, but you know, all these years later, I will say the game still holds up and actually looks pretty nice. The audio here is actually pretty clear, even for being an N64 game. I mean, obviously DDR games on the PlayStation and the arcade definitely sound better than this, but I was honestly surprised by the quality here. For collectors trying to get their hands on this game complete inbox with a dance pad, you'll probably be shelling out a decent amount of cash, as it seems like it's pretty rare to find on eBay these days. Now for myself, being in Japan, I just got super lucky and found a copy of the game online, complete with all the boxes, manuals, and dance pad for something like 2,000 yen, roughly $20 USD. So I almost had a heart attack when I received it though, because <laughs> as the seller, what they did, they just wrapped the thing up in plastic and just taped the stuff directly to the box. Now, my God, so after I you know, got the game and got this package and carefully removed all of the tape and didn't rip any more <laughs> of, off of the box or anything, you know, I, I was sad. Now, my box for the dance pad is a bit beat up, but it's still complete. I mean, the dance pad itself has some issues with the plastic kind of bubbling from the mat itself too, so that's something you might want to be on the lookout for when trying to track down this game. Now, the art on both the dance pad box and the game box are bright and colorful, I mean, featuring Disney characters front and center. It's definitely a nice piece to add to your collection. Dance Dance Revolution Disney Dancing Museum is an interesting curiosity. While the game is definitely aimed at a younger dancing crowd, it still can be fun to play. There is a decent amount of content available here and it will take you some time to unlock everything, although you can use the game's password system if you're impatient and just unlock everything that way. Uh, still, it's a cool piece to add to your Nintendo 64 collection if you're lucky enough to find it. As always, thanks for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to give us a like. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, retro content, special videos, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.